Amen. Good morning to each and every one of you, those that are here and those that are watching right now. And we pray for those that are on their way. We thank God for another day's journey, another opportunity to step on holy ground and to be within our right minds and to have the blood still running warm Amen. in our veins. Amen? Amen? Let me stop and just take a moment to all of our church, church officers, to all uh, uh, that were involved this week. We, we had two funerals, one on Wednesday, uh, Brother Jesse Butler. And so again, I want to take the opportunity to all of our officers, ushers, and everyone uh, that helped during that time to say thank you. Again, uh, the family at some time will reach out and let us know, but I just want to say thank you. Uh, what a great ongoing service for Brother Butler, and so we're grateful and thankful uh, that the Lord has blessed his family, and the Lord will bless them and keep them. And so again, if you miss Brother Butler's uh, service and you want to see it, it is on our Facebook page, and so you can see it again as well on Saturday, uh, the homegoing service for Sister Amber Cobb. Again, I want to thank so many people that were involved with that. Uh, we had a full house and even some standing outside. And so again, we're grateful to all of you, the officers, members, and friends that came out to support the family in time of bereavement. And again, as we go forward, uh, I'm sure the family will reach out at some other time to let us know. Again, we want to be prayerful for them, prayerful for Amber's two children, to ask God to continue to watch over, guide them, lead them, and direct them in the right way. Amen? Amen. And as well, again, our Women's Day is coming up on second Sunday in October, and none other than our own beloved Reverend Rose Dean will bring a message on that morning. Amen. So we're grateful for the, that opportunity, and please, we ask that you would just spread the word. Again, uh, we have our obligations as members of this church. Lights don't go on, things don't happen around here unless we got our members supported. We cannot expect anybody on the outside to support it. So if you came to the front of this church, whether you came way back when or you came since I've been here for 24 years and you committed your life to Christ, then you have an obligation here at this place to always be mindful of everything that is going on and to be mindful to support the church in every endeavor that goes on. And again, our anniversary, our church anniversary, the banner is up there. And for every year that the Lord has blessed us, that's what we ask you to contribute towards the anniversary. Again, you have until the end of the year, we ask that you would bless this church, bless us as we bless those that are out there and those that are within here to be able to help them as we go forward. As we go through and fall has set in, weather will be changing. It'll be getting a little chilly. We want to be able to turn the heat on, turn the air conditioner off and turn the heat on. So again, we need all of the help that we can get. Amen? Amen. While I'm thinking about that, we will be starting uh, at 10 o'clock until we get uh, to the winter, before the winter, maybe December 1st, uh, first Sunday in December. Again, we want to be here, and the purpose of this is, is the opportunity for you to take advantage of the daytime until uh, it starts getting darker early. So again, let us come, let us be part of the worship service. Again, I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether uh, the word is not out, but I had several people say to me, are we back in service? Yes, we're back in service. We've been back in service. We've been in full swing. And so we never miss the beat by giving the Lord praise and doing what the Lord has asked us to do. So, either you're not watching the broadcast live or later on, or you just keep using that as an excuse, thinking that Pastor got a little old and he's going to forget. I don't forget. I told a couple of people, this is about the third time, fourth time I told you. And so again, you go, oh, I'm coming, I'm coming. Well, don't let it be too late. Don't let it push you up the aisle in a casket and have to push you out in a casket that you decide to come. Come while you can give a praise. Come while we can gather together and fellowship one to another. So again, we just ask that you would 
bless the Lord. And those of you that are not members that you watch the broadcast, wherever you may be, I ask if your church is open, you get yourself in there and worship in your place that you have made your commitment. And then later on, watch Little Baptist Church uh, when, you, when you need a little boost during the week. Come on and watch on Facebook or on uh, YouTube or if you're one of those people that uh, my wife sent out to the event. Do it later on and then have an extra blessing during the week. Amen? Amen. Let us again be mindful. We want to again thank everybody that contributed uh, uh, on Second Sunday to the feeding of those that are less fortunate. Again, we want to thank uh, Brother Poole and the uh, Peter uh, Hall Memorial group that were down there and thank those people as well. So let us always be mindful that as we do unto others, we do what Christ has asked us to do. As well, the winter is starting to come upon us. The fall, uh, if you have any uh, jackets, any uh, caps, sock caps, any extra clothing such of that magnitude that you can share uh, with the Reconnection Program of the Union County uh, Urban League. Again, we ask that you would think about those that are coming out of incarceration. Now, we can't talk about them if we're not willing to try to help them. Amen. And so, my brothers and my sisters, even if you don't have it, if you go somewhere and you see a couple of sock caps or you see something that you can afford, get it and give it unto those that are in need. We will as well endeavor in the winter to do the same thing through our church and the Peter Hall Memorial uh, community to go down and pass out stuff that will help those that are outside sleeping in the cold, those that have no place to lay their head under shelter. So we want to be able to bless them. One of the things that I'm going to ask you to do and in our family personally, this year we decided not to give one another, to those of us that are adults and in the understanding, gifts, but we're going to come together and try to do something between Pilgrim and uh, my brother's church by leaving that we might bless those that are in need. So again, sometimes it might be better to sacrifice instead of getting it yourself. Do something to help others that you might show the Lord that you receive his blessing and you're thankful to share it. Amen? Amen. Come on, y'all. We'll be back. Amen? Amen? We're grateful for that again. And always uh, be mindful of those I know. I'm uh, not sure whether it was this week or not, but we do know that uh, Brother Marshall's brother passed and uh, I believe a nephew or someone else in the family passed. And Sister Marshall, uh, family, please pray for them. Pray for me next Sunday uh, or next week. I'm leaving to go to Georgia uh, for our homegoing service for my oldest sister. Reverend Rose Dean will be here on first Sunday. We will have communion. So we want to be able to come and worship the Lord and celebrate the Lord's Supper. So pray for me as we, our family, goes down to uh, do that day. My oldest sister, the rest, we thank God for her 83 years of life, love, and now her legacy. Pray for her children as they go through this, that the Lord would encourage them as well. Amen? Amen. And, and let me just also, I, I don't mean to do it to embarrass them, but I was uh, proud, I was grateful, and I was thankful. I, I want to thank you, Brother Lamar. I heard your prayer out in the parking lot, and you prayed a mighty prayer for the family, so I'm grateful for that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, come on, let's stand to our feet. And we want to go to First Corinthians, uh, First Corinthians chapter 2. First Corinthians chapter 2. We want to lift up just one verse this morning. First Corinthians chapter 2. Then we're going to ask Reverend Dean to come lead us in prayer as Brother Nichols leads us in the song for our morning um, talk with God through the altar. And again, uh, after we come back, we're just going to ask Brother Nichols to say something before we bring the word. Amen? Amen. Amen. First Corinthians 2, go to uh, verse 5. Verse 5. Hear these words. Peter delivers this message unto the church at Corinth. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. We need to know that in the midst of it, 
That's not in the Bible. Just listen. That Peter is telling us that we need to make sure our faith is strong in God and not in man. Amen? Amen. Believers. Struggling. 
struggling with any other diseases in hospitals and nursing homes. Cover them right now. Right now. Nudge them and let them know they may not be able to have visitors, but you are with them 24 yes. seven. Yes. You are with them. Yes. They just need to call on your name. Yes. So that you'll know that they know that yes. you are God all by yes. yourself. And you don't really need anyone else. Many have lost loved ones. Yeah. Lift up Carla's family right now. Right. Her children right now. Right. Let them know that God can take care of them and God can comfort them. Lord, I lift up the Buffalo family. Yeah. Knowing that they have gone through. The children have lost their father. Yeah. The mother has lost her husband. Touch them, Lord. Yeah. Comfort them, Lord. Yeah. I lift up the Allen family right now, Lord. I lift them up and ask you to cover the whole family. Yeah. And comfort them. Yeah. Lord, we know you're able. Yeah. And we know you're willing. So I stand here, Lord, asking you to just be who you are. Yeah. Do what you do best. Yeah. Wake yeah. us up every morning. Yeah. Take care of us. Keep us in our right mind. Yeah. For everyone under the sound of my voice right now. For whatever reason, the Lord hasn't allowed the virus to enter your body. So that simply means you are a faker. You are a praiser.
cover everyone. Give them peace and give them comfort. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.
are correct. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but on the power of God. I want to this morning title this message, The Platform for Your Faith. The Platform for Your Faith. All too often our faith is based upon the wrong thing or things. We are right now type of people, type of society. If it doesn't come when you want it, we so change to something else. If God doesn't bless us when we think he should bless us, then we don't want to talk to God at all. If God doesn't do what we want him to do when we want him to do, then we want to go and talk with Buddha. If God doesn't give us what we need when we think we need it, then we want to deal with Confucius. I want to tell you that, that if it's not that, then we put down what we don't know or what other people don't know. Let me just say, I, I, I smashed my crystal ball a long time ago. Lady Cleo is no longer in business. And Dion, Dion Ward has given up a hotline. Your faith should not be something that should be based upon humans, materialistic things, and anything else but upon the word of God. I said to you last week for those uh, that Jesus prayed for us that our faith would not fail us. If your faith fails, it's because you are not basing it on something, uh, and that you're basing it on something other than God and on Christ and the Holy Spirit. I don't know about you, but by short time living here on earth, God and Christ and the Holy Spirit has never failed me. They've always showed up right on time. That they've always, when I've fallen short, been there to pick me up and put me back on a solid ground. I don't know about you, but, but if I falter and fail and no one else cares, no one else is around me, I do know this, that God, Christ, and the Holy Spirit will show up and show out and pick me back up and put me back together again. All oh, some of us are like Humpty Dumpty, and we fall in off our wall, and nobody can put us back together again. But I stop by to tell somebody here, somebody that's watching, somebody that will hear this later on, if you just trust in God, he can pick up all your pieces and put them back together again. Paul encounters his uh, people. He encounters with those at the church of Corinth. Paul used this uh, language with, which indicates that his message is to them and was not about them or those in charge, but it was only about Christ crucified. My brothers and my sisters, any preacher, any evangelist, any pastor, any bishop, any pope, go on down the line, up the line, whatever it is, when they stand behind the sacred desk and they don't preach Christ crucified, they're not preaching at all. When they come and they do things to tickle your ear, tickle your fancy, they're not helping you at all. When they preach prosperity and all of those other things and they fail to preach Christ crucified, they are doing you no good. I want to tell you today, so many times people come to the house of worship wanting the preacher, wanting the choir, wanting the officers to cater to them. When the reason why we enter in is to gain the knowledge and the information so that we can be connected closer to God, closer to Christ, and to be within the reach of the Holy Spirit. I need to tell you today, if you enter in here for anything else other than to get the information which would cause you to be on the platform of God, 
to be able to know that Christ is a solid rock that you can stand on. To know that God will not leave you, nor will he forsake you, nor will he go about not supplying your need. You can get in for the wrong reason. Don't come because Alan's preaching. Don't come because Dean is preaching. Don't come because your pastor is preaching or somebody is singing or somebody is ushering or somebody is praying. Come because you know the God you serve, the Christ that died, and the Holy Spirit will show up and show out in your life. I can just say, if you want this to be about you, then you should live up the, the name of the Lord with all your heart and all your mind and all your soul and watch what they'll do for you. When you really want to be connected to God, when you really want to be connected to Christ, when you really want the Holy Spirit to engulf your body, give God the praise, give Christ the glory, give the Holy Spirit your honor, give it all to them and watch only put you on a platform that will connect you directly to him. The people of Corinth were there and even in the midst of the crowd, Reverend Dean, his enemies were there at the church of Corinth. Let me tell you that even though we enter into this place which is holy, we enter into this place which is a house of worship and a house of prayer. Don't think that the devil won't try to come into the church and to wreck it and wreck you along with it. Don't base it upon who the pastor is. Don't base it upon who's playing the organ. Don't base it upon who the officers are or who the ushers are. But can I get somebody to say, base it upon Jesus who bled, suffered, and died on Calvary's cross, who was willing to shed his blood that we might Say that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Yes, it was even the enemies in the church of Corinth that spoke very contemptuously of him. They talked about Paul like a dog. They put him down. They scandalized his name because Paul did not preach about the emperor, did not preach about the scribes and Pharisees, did not preach about the Sanhedrin council, but he preached Jesus Christ crucified. Let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, that when we preach Christ crucified, then we want to know why he was crucified. We want to know why, if he had power to call on uh, 12,000 legions of angels to put him off the cross, why he stayed there? Why would he give his life for wretch like us? Why would he come down when he was at the right hand of the Father? When you preach Christ crucified, you let somebody know not only was he crucified, but he rose on the third day morning with all power in his hand. Yes, they were very contemptuous about what Paul was saying. His bodily presence, uh, they were there to say that uh, Paul was weak and his speech was contemptible. It was in the midst of the possibly he had a little a body that they talked about him. You know, if you don't come to church with a big hat on, they might talk about you. If you don't come to church with a brand new three-piece suit on and some brand new Stacey Adams or some Gucci's, they'll talk about you. If you don't have the latest fashion that you're wearing, if you don't come in and you got a big pocketbook and all of the jewelry, they'll talk about you. Maybe it's because you got a low voice and you yet have learned how to give God the glory the right way. But though he had not so good of elocution of all that he said, Paul spoke about Christ crucified. Yes, you heard me say it over and over again that you ought not talk about yourself first until you talk about he that woke you up early in the morning. He that made sure blood was running warm in your bed. He that put a roof over your head, food on your table. He that made sure you had a job to go to. He that helped you raise your children. All I can tell you right now is that we need to base our life and our faith on the platform of God's word. Paul, Paul reveals to them that he was with them in weakness. And he 
he was there in fear and in much trembling, the Bible said. Paul was there and he was there in weakness, not because Paul wasn't okay, but Paul was in weakness because he was leaning on the Holy Spirit to guide his lips to speak to the people. He was in fear because Paul didn't want to say the wrong thing that would cause men, women, boys, and girls to go to hell. He didn't want to do it to cause them to think that he had more power than the God and the Jesus he served. I, he was trembling because he had the Holy Spirit moving in him. It was like fire shut up in his bones. I shared with you before, and maybe again as well, Reverend Dean, that when you stand behind the sacred desk, something happens to you. You get a little weak, and you get a little fearful, and a little trembling. You, you want to stand, and you want to be able to represent the God that you serve, the Christ that has represented you at the throne of grace. You want to be able to be eloquent and to say the things that will cause men, women, boys, and girls to give God glory, to cause those that yet have not come out of sin, out of darkness, into the marvelous light. Paul's weakness and fear and trembling could have been the result of illness, of the suffering under that which was of the Corinthians. Don't you remember what they did to Paul? He was out there and they beat him. They left him for dead. They did all sorts of manner of things to him. When he changed his life from being Saul and he changed it to Paul. Maybe somebody out here today, you have felt something like this because you gave your life to Christ. You stopped running the street. You stopped going to the bars. You stopped doing some of the things you used to do. And people look at you and they want to scandalize you. They want to bring up all the old things you used to do. But I want to tell you today, as long as your faith is on the platform of the Word of God, let them talk about you. Let them scandalize your name. The truth of the matter is, they got no heaven to put you in, and somebody ought to say thank you. They got no hell to say. It is Paul's weakness and fear and trembling that because he was there while in Corinth, or, or, or some believe it was because of the threat of persecution. You remember that when Paul, when Paul used to be Saul, he would go around proclaiming and killing the Christians. But as soon as he changed his life, and instead of killing the Christians, he was living for Christ, bringing life unto the Christians. With, per, with persuasive doctrine of human wisdom, in every case, uh, uh, he leaves out man. For anything that he says, he leaves man out of it. And he talks about how God can make a way that God might become the more evident in everything that we do and how we live. When we open our mouth, the first thing in the morning ought to be thank you, Lord, for another day's journey. When somebody looks over the life, when somebody wonders how you made it through, the first word ought to be, God made a way for me. Christ paid the price for me, and the Holy Spirit dwells in me. Yes, I use none of the means of which great orators uh, avail themselves, Paul says, to become popular. Paul's not trying to become popular with the people. Paul is there to spread the word and to spread the message to those that our faith ought to be on the platform and we ought to base it on the word of God. Yes, my brothers and my sisters, you will be lifted by you, excuse me, you will not be lifted by anybody else better than what God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit can do. Don't you remember the songwriter said that Jesus himself said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. No, there wasn't any pause to say whether you were black or white, rich or poor, male or female. All it says, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. It is here. Paul uh, that, that, that Paul directs us to these words in verse 5. Paul says that your faith 
stand in the wisdom of men, yeah, yeah. but in the power of God. Let me read it one more time. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Yeah, yeah. That your faith should not be based upon what men say. Yeah. Preaching strategies center on the wisdom of men around emotion, entertainment, and human personality may yield response, but not the result of the kingdom of God. We must not do it for entertainment. We must not do it to arouse your emotion. But what we must do is preach until the kingdom of God comes down in your heart. Preach until the kingdom of God comes down in your soul. Preach until the kingdom of God reaches your mind that the wholeness of you will be on the word of God. That when you wake in the morning, you've got the word of God on your mind. When you go through your day and trouble seem to come your way, you got the word of God on your mind. When you get home and trouble may be in your house, you the word of God to help you in your home. Yes. yes. Many people you slick, entertaining, or even deceptive means to lure people into the church. Others so-called groups of religious uh, themes and justify it by saying we're drawing them in and then winning them to Jesus. But the principle stands, what you draw them in with is what you draw them to. If you got the choir that's all 100 voices, you've got a full orchestra, and all they care about is hearing the music and almost dancing like they're in the disco, you ain't done nothing at all. Yes, you can have all the ministries you want. You can cover everything from A to Z. But they're only coming for the ministry and they're not coming for Jesus. I know somebody will get mad at me, Dean, because I'm telling the secrets of the preaching situation. But I want to tell you today, I would rather have people that show up at church that want to give God glory, that want to seek his face, that want to know who he is and know him in the pardoning of the sin. I got no gift. Dean got no gifts. All we want to do is preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, preach Christ crucified, preach Christ rising, and preach Christ that is coming back for his church without spot or thank you. Let me say not be in the wisdom of men. If someone's faith is in the wisdom of man and not in the power of God, if someone can be persuaded into the kingdom by human wisdom, they can also be persuaded out of the kingdom by human wisdom. Let me say it one more time. If they come in because of the preacher and not because of he who was crucified, they'll surely leave because of the preacher yeah, yeah, yeah. and not be saved by he who was crucified. Are y'all in heaven to hear that? They, uh, that they might not be drawn by human motives, nor overcome by mere human arguments. Lest it should be said that either uh, the heretic or logical had made them Christians. But when nothing but Christ crucified was plainly preached, the success must be founded not on human wisdom, but divine evidence and operation. The gospel was so preached that God might appear and be glorified in all. That the illumination of your soul and your conversion to God might appear to have nothing to do with the human being. Nothing to do with what man said, but what the Holy Ghost put inside of him. Your belief, therefore, of the truth which hath been proposed to you is founded not in human wisdom, but in divine power. Human wisdom was not employed, and human power, if it, if it had been employed, could not have produced the change. The songwriters must have, had, must have understood, Brother Nichols, when it is that uh, Hebert and Dykes wrote the song, 
holy, holy, holy. It, it must have been when Wesley and Hudson said, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Maybe it was Martin Luther's song, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. It could have been Robinson and White's song, Come Thou Fight, or Davis's song, Lead Me, Savior. Or it was a scabbing and converse. What a friend we have in Jesus. It could have been the prophets understanding that's why we have uh, in Genesis to Revelation that it speaks about God in the past. It speaks about God in the present. And it speaks about God in the future. Yes, it talks about our Savior at the right hand of the Father in the beginning in the Old Testament. It talks about in the New Testament how the Savior came and that he walked among us, that he dealt among us, that he died among us, and he died for our sin. But it also talks about the future of our Savior. It talks about that he went to prepare a place, that where he is, there we may be also. There are the platforms for our life. The platform for our soul, the platform for our heart, and our platform for our mind. Yeah. It is the platform for our love. When you read Genesis to Revelation, something ought to happen to you. You ought to be able to stand on solid ground. This platform puts us right in front of the God that we serve, the God that's able to do all things exceedingly and abundantly well. Yes, this platform puts us in front of the Son who was crucified on Calvary's cross, who bore our strife, who took our being, who hung on the cross and bled, suffered, and died. But here's where we stand because he got us on the third day morning with all power in his hand. And he promised never to leave us, never to leave us alone. He said, if I go, I will send a comforter that when I send a comforter, you will be connected with nothing else but that. 
Again, next week, Brother Dean will be here. We will have communion, so let us be here again on time. Let's stop coming at five minutes before. Let's get here at least by quarter to ten. Just in case Pastor needs you to do something. Just in case Reverend Dean needs you to do something. We need to be here a little bit on time. Amen? Amen. Uh, Brother, let's wish you play. <laughs> Go on play. We have to fight, although we have to fight. We have to hold up the blood stain banner. We have to hold it up until we die. We are soldiers in the army. We have to fight. Yeah.